On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. Stephen Paulos, to address convocation. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's a big day for us all. There are a few things in life as sweet as receiving the highest honor from your own university, especially nearly 40 years after graduating. I am literally bursting with pride and so incredibly grateful to Western for granting me this honorary degree. Thank you. Of course, I'm thankful to Western for much more than this. I had a wonderful time here, experiencing a giant leap in my human capital. The things I learned here have taken me very far. Now, I entered through that wonderful gate out on Richmond Street in 1978 with, as already mentioned, a highly ambitious goal to one day become governor of the Bank of Canada and have my signature on the money. <laughs> and it happened 35 years later. I can therefore honestly say through personal experience that Western is a place where the best foundations are built, enabling dreams to come true. So how appropriate then that I stand today before the graduating class of engineers. After all, for engineers, building the best foundations and turning dreams into reality are just another day on the job. What a glorious prospect. We live in a time when many are fearful of new technologies, particularly artificial intelligence, robots doing the manufacturing, trucks that drive themselves, AIs providing personalized financial advice. It's been estimated that up to half of Canadian jobs may be susceptible to replacement by AI. And people ask me all the time, what is the future of work? Well, by the way, no engineer has ever asked me that. <laughs> now that's because Engineers always seem to be in the middle of it. I mean, even in Star Trek, right? Where life is truly advanced and AI is everywhere, the outcome, George, pretty well always depends on either Scotty or Geordi or O'Brien. Now, what people forget is that this is the fourth industrial revolution. This is not the first. Many jobs were made redundant in each of the other three industrial revolutions too. But in every case, more jobs were created than were destroyed. Each industrial revolution was also very gradual, taking place over many years. And people adapted to it. In fact, they took advantage of it. Take, for example, a manufacturing worker who was displaced by a robot. Is that worker expected to go back to school to learn to write code in order to adapt? No. Those who do write code or build robots earn good incomes and they spend them on a wide range of traditional things like food or clothing, houses, renovations, cars, education, health care, all those things. And that spending creates new jobs in all job categories including in sectors where the transition from manufacturing will be much more natural. Now, of course, as a society, we need to help people adapt to this sort of change, giving them easy access to retraining and to financial support if need be. And this brings me to mind Western's motto, veritas et utilitas, truth and usefulness. The truth is that jobs will change because of AI, but with time and adaptation, everyone can remain useful. Now, I assure you, this is how it has worked throughout history, and this is how it will work this time. Demographic forces are actually helping, as Canada is aging and workers are getting harder to find. By 2025, all of our workforce growth here in Canada will be coming from immigration. 
Today, there are over half a million job vacancies in Canada in every sector of the economy. And the issue that's raised with me most often by Canada's CEOs is the shortage of skilled workers. So you, the graduates of 2019, are already perfectly positioned to succeed in the world I've just described. So what can I offer you by way of advice as you begin your next chapter? Well, I suppose mainly the benefit of hindsight, which is something I have an ample supply. So what does that hindsight tell me? That I expect that you will someday be as gobsmacked as I am by all the change that you will have witnessed. Now, I graduated from Western in an era of punch cards and mainframe computers. My thesis needed to be hand-typed, every page error-free, on special quality paper. There was no editing on the screen and reprinting the page back in 1981. Meanwhile, my own professional field has changed continuously since I graduated. My views have evolved. Even though those great foundations I mentioned earlier, well, they've never shifted. In short, I've spent much of my time since I graduated learning new things in order to succeed. Well, thank goodness, Western has taught us all, not just the things we must know today, but how to learn the things we will need to know in the future. If you are looking for my advice, it would be to keep up the daily learning habit when you walk out of that gate. Read widely, of course, but mainly ask questions. You can learn more by talking to someone over a coffee or preferably a beer than you can learn in a whole week while reading a book. Buy yourself a nice notebook as your reflection journal. Buy it this weekend. Use it to keep a record of the little tidbits you learn along the way, whether it's about your field, other fields, or about people, especially about yourself. Because that's the other thing that will change profoundly, and that's you. Today, you are the sum of your life experiences to this point. Think about all the forks in the road that you've encountered already, even at such a young age. Yogi Berra once said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. So he was absolutely right about that, because each fork in the road will teach you something about yourself, about your fundamental values, and it's worth recording some of those thoughts in your new reflection journal. It will help you understand yourself and others as you make your way. Be yourself, and you will always be in fashion. Now that's for tomorrow. Today is about you. It's about pride and it's about gratitude. You should be very proud of yourselves. You've got a crucial step completed, crucial to opening many paths to the future. And while basking in that achievement, don't forget to thank those special people who helped and supported you along the way because nobody gets here on their own. I know I would not be standing here today were it not for a lifetime of support from my partner, Valerie. Nor would I be standing here today were it not for my time here at Western. When they announced that I would be receiving an honorary degree, I received a wonderful note from my thesis advisor here at Western. Now, this is somebody who I found very difficult to impress back in 1980. But in his note, he said this honor was richly deserved and that I've been doing an outstanding job in an unusually volatile era. <laughs> now that was worth waiting for. <laughs> so thank you again, Western, and thank you, graduates. Take this great foundation, chase your dreams, and good luck on your journey, wherever it takes you. Thank you.